Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today's tutorial is all about creating a vinyl decal to go on top of a wood um, surface. So this could be a frame, this could be a plaque, etc. I have a baby gift that I need to get out and so I thought it would be really sweet to put a, um, a monogram name here and a little sweet sentiment so that the um, new mom could put a picture of her and her baby or just the baby right here. And so the project materials that you would need for something like this would be your plaque or frame of choice. I got this one at Michael's and it's their Make Market brand. It does come with a little stick that allows you to prop it up very easily. And I have a just a plain white bag that I also want to put a vinyl decal on to personalize this. We have some adhesive vinyl and of course all of our tools. And this is the um, paint that I use, but you could use any white paint that you want. And I'll actually explain what I did for the paint uh, treatment because I did something that I don't normally do and then of course you'll need some transfer tape all right let's head over to design space all right now we are in design space and this is the final look that I will be showing you how I created um, this will be the frame and this will be the front of the gift bag so the first thing that I would like to start with is I would like to start with the gift bag I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to choose a square and I will unlock the square up here where it says size and I'm going to change that to a width of 7 and a height of 10. That is the size of the front of the gift bag. When you are measuring make sure that you are not measuring the part where it will be on the bottom of the bag. I'm going to go ahead and change this to white just for design purposes and we will not be cutting this box out. This will be hidden. We are only going to be doing the monogram. The next thing I'm going to do is going to go down here in the bottom of the menu and go to monogram. It first comes up you have a choice. First of all you'll put in your initials. You can then have a cut design or you can have a cut and draw design and I have done both and they are super fun. You have an option of modern, elegant, handwritten and vintage styles. Based on what you enter up here, it'll populate your letters in this text style box down here on the bottom right and then it will show you a preview right here in the top right. You also, depending on the the um, text style that you choose, it one may or may not have anything that it can have surrounding it, or it might have some elements that you can choose from. And these are super fun. Also have a thematic. Now thematic, you have botanical, decorative, as special occasions, those are kind of fun and cute. Interest, again, fun and cute and sports. Okay, I'm choosing botanical theme and I'm going to come over here to the olive wreath and I'm going to click on that. And I like this first K that is selected but you could go through and choose the um, design of letter that you like the most. It's got so many to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and click add to canvas and it'll come up like this. Now I want to resize my image so I'm going to bring that over here and I'm not going to worry about whether it is centered or not. I want to know how big I want it to look. I do want some white around. This would be the bag itself. So I'm just going to resize it thing is I will select both of them and I will go to align center and this is again just for visual purposes. The box here will be hidden. And this is what will, the only thing that will cut out is the monogram. As far as the monogram is concerned, I want to go ahead and change this to a bluish color. Now what I did is I chose a blue. Um, originally I went to advanced and I just moved the dot 
the little circle dot to where I wanted the blue to be. And this is the result that I got and I like as our little monogram. And I am just going to move that again over here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a, another rectangle square shape and I am going to resize that. Okay, so we have our, this is gonna represent the frame. The next thing I'm gonna do is go back to shapes and I'm going to click heart. All right, now the heart, that had a size of 3.75. So I'm gonna come up here to size and change that to 3.75. And then I'm going to place it, oh, let's see. I'm gonna move this over to be on exactly on a, a marking for inches. And then this heart needs to come in about, about a quarter of an inch. So about right here. And then I'm going to select both of them and I want to do, go back to align and I want to align vertically. Okay, so actually, wow, that was pretty darn close. It hardly even moved. Okay, so while these are both selected, I want to show you a really cool feature that I just found the other day. Um, I'm very familiar with the slice function, but I don't want to do that. I came over to combine, and then I chose the word subtract. Now, subtract is similar to slice, but it goes ahead and it subtracts the uh, shape for you. So if I click on subtract and wait just a moment, then it automatically slices and removes the piece that I don't want. And I think that is just super cool. Okay, so the next thing I did is I went to images and I typed in my whole heart and then I scrolled down until where is the this one right here okay you have my whole heart for my whole life and I selected that and added to canvas and that definitely comes in a lot bigger than need be so I'm going to resize that I can just click and drag one of the corners and I'm going to put that right here in this corner and this sweet little sentiment will be in the blue color so I'm going to come back up to blue and hit that blue color that I'm using I have my sentiment here you have my whole heart for my whole life okay then and I actually just want to kind of group that together that way, if I need to move it around, it stays put. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to images again. Really need to find a monogram or a sliced, sliced. Okay, let's see what comes up with that. Okay, so down here, I had to go down a ways, but it's, oh, it's called split letter K. And that's good to know. So I chose the split letter K and I added to canvas. It'll come in rather large, so I'm going to have to resize it. That looks about good right there. And then next I'm doing a text box. Now the text box will have the name of the sweet little boy and his name is Kaysen. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. And then I wanna go up here to the font menu and we want to find some sort of script. So I'm gonna type in script and see what comes up. There is all kinds of scripts that you can choose from. I have to remember the one that I used earlier, but let's say that I wanted the BFC Farmhouse Christmas. Then I would come over here I'm going to move Kaysen up there. I am going to resize Kaysen to be bigger. And I'm going to rotate just ever so slightly, just like that. And you can see where the E and the A kind of sit on that split. 
and you can do this any way you want. You could leave it as a regular font, you um, like a just a print non-script font. I'm going to change this to white just so you can see. There we go. And we need to change the K to a blue as well. So this is what this would look so like. At this point, I have the bag and I'm only going to be printing out the monogram. And then I'm going to have these elements over here and the cutting out. These elements over here will be the ones that are cut out of my vinyl as well. So the, so the bag itself will need to be hidden. We don't need anything else, right? And then this frame right here, we're going to have to hide the frame. So we have casein will cut out in white. And that is really all there is to it. The next thing will be is that we want to hide the boxes. I'm going to find here in my group, I'm going to find the image um, in the layers panel. And I'm going to click on the little eye and it'll make that disappear because I don't need to cut that. Same thing with my bag. I don't need to cut that box as well. So I'll just find in the group the basic square cut. I'll hide that. And so now I have just the monogram. Okay, so these are the only elements that are going to be cutting out. I've got most of it in blue and a little bitty part in white. And this white piece would be a great way to use scrap vinyl. Okay, now that we have all of the elements, the size, the color, and the orientation, everything the way we want, we're going to come over here and we're going to click Make. So in Design Space, it is going to sort the project into mats by color. So Kaysen was chosen with white vinyl, so it is on a mat here. Uh, by itself, which is totally fine. We can do two mats. We also could move this tiny little piece to the same mat as the other so that we can um, cut it all out at one time. Let's go check the other mat and see if there needs to be any kind of adjustments. We actually do. See this K right here. Now I could move it over here. It was out of the, the wreath because I did not attach it. That is really important. I totally forgot to attach them together. So I have the K that is split for the name. I have, you have my whole heart for my whole life. That's fine the way it is. The wreath is here, and then this K. This K was just over off to the side, and I just clicked and dragged it to here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel. We're going to go attach that first. So I am going to select both, go to Arrange, and they actually are already centered, so that's good. The next thing I'm going to do is come down here to the bottom and hit Attach. Now these both of these elements will cut together in that exact placement. And when I weed out this center part, the K will be exactly where it needs to be. So that is a really good advantage to checking your work when you hit make before you actually do some cutting. Okay, let's go back to our make screen. So we see Kaysen there in white. And the second mat, we have our wreath now with the K in it. And then here we have the K that is split. And we have the quote, you have my whole heart for my whole life. And then I'm going to bring down the words, you have my whole heart for my whole life. And then finally, the split K, I'm going to bring that down over here. And this is great because my vertical strip is, you know, it's a full 12 inches. So I've got plenty of room and space. So this will cut out just like this. The other thing that I can do if I want to save some time is I can go back to map one and I can select on the three dots and I'm going to move the object and I'm going to select the blue mat and confirm. 
and then you'll see Kaysen up here in this top corner. And I'm actually just going to move Kaysen over here to the top left. And the reason why I'm doing that is not because I'm going to cut it out of blue vinyl, but because I can put my blue vinyl here on the left and cut all of these. And then at this, right after that's done, it'll come over here and it'll cut the white um, little scrap piece that I'm going to place here and it'll cut the casein. And I can just do everything with one cut. Okay, so as you can see, I have placed my blue vinyl over here on the left and I'm going to use my brayer to make sure that is nice and smooth down on to the mat. And then this is a scrap piece of white vinyl that I'm going to place on the top right. So everything will cut at one time. I just have to stick one mat into the machine, which is very, very handy. Let's go back to design space for the final selections of the material and tools. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to choose is the base material, and we're just going to be using removable vinyl. Um, then I'm going to do more pressure. And in fine, the fine point blade in Clamp B, that's pretty much a default, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to go ahead and load the mat into my maker, and then I will get this cut out, and we will come back to the overhead cam. All right, everything is cut out, and now it is time to remove the vinyl material from the mat, and it just looks really good. One thing that I do before I remove anything from the mat is I like to take my brayer, or my, I can do, you can do your brayer, you can do your scraper, but I like to basically smooth down the um, vinyl one more time before weeding it and it just makes it such a, a easier time to weed. Okay, so remember when you go to remove your vinyl that you want to pull your mat away from the vinyl. Okay, not the vinyl away from the mat. We want this to stay as flat as possible. Very nice. Okay, and we'll work with those in just a moment. So we've got our bag here, which we will put the wreath on, and then we have our uh, frame. Now, with the frame, before we get to doing that, um, I just used some generic white, um, well, this is actually outdoor patio paint, but basically I just didn't have any chalk paint on hand, so I just used some white paint that I had, and I used a foam brush, and I did two coats. They dried re really, really quickly, and I did load the, br the little sponge brush with a little bit of water just to kind of make the paint not as, um, uh, I guess, not as thick, and um, it just kind of gave it a, a little bit of a translucent effect, almost like um, a like a distress or a whitewash. So it looks really, looks really good. And you can see some of the wood grain, just barely, but it's a really nice even finish. Okay, so let's go ahead, set these aside, and we are going to get these items cut down. We're going to cut off the excess vinyl that we do not need, and then we are going to weed. All right, I zoomed in for you, and okay, let's find my favorite weeding tool. Okay, so here is our word, casein, such a sweet name, and then I'm going to very gently and slowly peel away all of the excess and I always like to double check and make sure that nothing gets left behind but ultimately by bray brayering or burnishing down the vinyl before weeding it I, I tend to get a smoother weeding. 
All right, we've got one, two, three, four. So these are just the little middles of the letter. And I think I got all of them. So this project is for a student of mine that, well, a former student, because she's in her 20s. So fun story. I taught her in eighth grade. And then I taught her in 11th grade at a different school in a different district. So isn't that serendipitous? But anyway, she um, and her mother have been just a really fun part of my life ever since. And she is in her 20s and just had a baby. So I just wanted to make her something special. Okay, I don't know if you're catching this, but this is bleeding so nicely and these are so intricate. I feel like the life part is about to give me some trouble. Okay, that was hiding. It is the tiniest L piece ever. Here it is. Note to self. There we go. Much better. Oh, back to... Um, Back to my story, so um, just we've kept in touch throughout the years, and then of course back in the fall, it was so awesome when she let me know that she was having a sweet little baby, and um, we live in different states now, so. I don't get to see her, but FaceTime and phone calls is super fun. And I just got to see via FaceTime the sweet little baby. I thought that she needed a sweet little picture frame. I'm sure she has a million, but you know, new moms, you can never have enough picture frames. All right, so let's double check. You have my whole heart for my whole life. I just love that sentiment. Okay, and then the next one is the split K, and I think this will definitely be a lot easier to read. so pretty. Oh, just look at that. It is so pretty. And then finally, we have this one. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to weed out the middle of the K. I love this particular monogram font. It just makes me happy. And then I am going to very carefully start weeding out this wreath. I think that is good. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay, so these two pieces are done and ready. I'm going to get some transfer tape. 
and we're going to go ahead and put this onto here with some transfer tape and I think I'm just going to use like some paper transfer tape and so we'll have it here like that and then we'll just do this all at one time so the good thing about this transfer tape is that it has some grid lines on it it is a paper transfer tape so it's a lot um, less it has a less strong grip, I guess, is what we could say. But it also has grid lines. So I can still see what I'm doing. Alright, I'm going to fold that. And add a line. Okay. I think that'll work. We're going to burnish the front and the back. Right. Oops, there we go. And I found one more tiny little middle. Okay, so now we're going to be able to line up, see the lines here, and then I just want to have the A and the E, and I also want it as middle of the road as possible. So I think that'll be middle. And then very slowly, I'm going to pull up the paper transfer tape because I want to make sure that the name stays down on top of this other vinyl design. Okay. That looks really I don't know if you guys can see that. That actually looks really good. All right, good job. The A is dead on, and then everything else just dips just slightly. The A and the N, oh, perfect. Okay, so now for the good part. We're gonna put this on here, but I definitely need some transfer tape for that. To be lined up with one of those lines. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there. And then we'll go this way. Perfect. All right. Burnish down the front really good. I'm going to burnish the back. remove this carrier sheet. All right. Okay, now I'm just centering um, on the back. I'm just going to do this by eye and put that down. All right, time for the big reveal. So this paper transfer tape is perfect for gift bags because it's not pulling on the gift bag at all. And everything that is 
supposed to stay down is staying down. That looks so good. Okay, next piece. All right. So I think with this, I'm actually going to choose my clear. Do clear piece a little bit stronger then I don't know will that fit on top of it no nope. I probably should do one more okay so this is gonna go over here just like so that up and let's see will it allow me to line up a word it looks like whole and life and whole heart perfect okay I need to make sure that little L stays down for sure. There we go. And then this will go right over here in the corner. Nice, that looks so good. And the final piece, here we go. I can line up this line right here with the line on the grid. That is really perfect. That'll help me with keeping things from looking a little cattywampus. And then this way, because we put the name on top first, it'll all go one time. And then I won't have to pull stuff off of vinyl, which is already on top of wood. Ooh, that's serious. Holding our breath. All right. I'm going to get this pulled up. Beautiful. That is so smooth. We are done. So sweet. You have my whole heart for my whole life. And then a sweet little monogram. And then picture can go there. Oh, this just looks so good. This would be great for pictures. Of really for anybody. You could even have your um your initial and last name there for you and the and your significant other. You could have one for all of your kids. So okay. Well, that is another successful craft project. I really hope that this has been not only um, informative, but inspiring for you. And if it was, go ahead and hit that like button. That definitely helps the channel. It's so neat, guys. I just keep staring at it. It's so neat. So I hope this is inspiring to you to go out and just craft something beautiful every day. Put a little crafty pizzazz into your life. All right, I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. 
I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.